Idaho's Republican Governor Brad Little is on a trip to the Texas-Mexico border this week, along with nine other Republican governors. You see him there, just over Nebraska Governor Pete Ricketts' shoulder. Now, it's kind of a weird stunt that a bunch of Republicans have been doing, making a stand about the border crisis. And I should note here, of course, in case this is not obvious, uh, Idaho, right all the way up there, is not on the southern border. Far from it though it does share a 45-mile border with Canada. Republicans seem way less worried about that border for some reason. I don't know. And while Governor Little was away touring the border on this stunt, the state's lieutenant governor, Janice McEachin, who happens to be running for governor herself, more on that later, basically outstunted him by just taking control of the state. Now, the Idaho Constitution has this interesting line that if the governor leaves the state, the lieutenant governor is basically in charge. Lots of states have this. But the current lieutenant governor appears to be the first to interpret that clause in this way. So while the governor was away at the border doing his sort of stunty thing, she requested information on the steps needed for the governor to activate the National Guard, to send them to the very border the governor was visiting. And she issued an executive order that prohibited all state agencies, including schools, from requiring proof of a COVID-19 vaccine or requiring mandatory testing. The governor responded, tweeting, quote, I will be rescinding and reversing any actions taken by the lieutenant governor when I return. James Dawson is a politics reporter for Boise State Public Radio. And he's been following this truly bizarre story, and he joins me now. Um, James, thanks so much for joining us. I guess first give us a little backstory here. This this did happen last summer. I think we covered it on the show where the governor left and the, and the lieutenant governor pulled something similar. Is that right? Yeah, well, er, yeah. So last May, we had uh, the governor leave the states uh, for a, uh, you know, a conference that he was with with other Republican governors. And uh, she issued an executive order that would have uh, banned mask mandates in schools. Now, in Idaho, any type of mask mandate or vaccination requirement, which there aren't any for Idaho public schools, uh, have to go through the local school board. And so, you know, that was immediately reversed by the governor when he got back. And we actually saw the same thing happen today. As you saw the tweet from Governor Little, he actually reversed that while he was in Texas, which could actually spark a lawsuit. We don't know yet. Okay, what's the deal here? This is not, I mean, normally what happens in a lot of states, governor, lieutenant governor run as a kind of ticket, like president, vice president. There's other states where they're independently elected. What's the relationship here and what is going on? Yeah, that's exactly right. There's not much of a relationship, really. Uh, you have, you know, the lieutenant governor, who is a pretty far right politician. The governor, Brad Little, is, you know, uh, part of a family dynasty of ranchers here in the states. Uh, he's much more moderate and has been around for a very long time in the Idaho political sphere. Whereas uh, Janice McGeehan, you know, she's relatively new, not too new. Uh, this is her first statewide position. But I, I mean, when the pandemic was really going last summer, uh, for the first surge, there was a point where they didn't talk for two or three weeks, uh, which he told us on one of our talk shows here at Boise State Public Radio. Uh, and then it's just been devolving ever since. Uh, you've had her show up at businesses where uh, they reopened before they were allowed to under the reopening plan. And she's uh, criticized him at most every step for any actions he's taken. Yeah, it sounds like she has been too... Uh She's been to his right, so to speak, on these public health issues and basically been sort of berating him about being too authoritarian and too concerned with public health. Uh, is she she's now has she announced formally that she's going to primary him? Oh, yeah. She filed for, uh, you know, technically you file as a, or file a treasurer report and you name a treasurer here in Idaho. And she did that uh, several months ago. So it's been well known uh, that she is running for governor. Uh, the governor himself is getting uh, his reelection campaign started right now. Uh, and it's going to be a crowded field. You also have, uh, you know, Ammon Bundy, who led the uh, armed standoff at the Malheur Wild Wildlife Refuge in Oregon in 2016. He's also running in that Republican primary. Wow, that will be indeed uh, crowded. What What is her deal? What's her background? Her background is she's a business owner. Uh, she owns a few businesses with her husband in Idaho Falls, uh, which is in the eastern part of the state, uh, a bar and restaurant, an automotive dealership or a parts dealership. Uh, and, you know, she 
has recently been really courting uh, far-right groups, including a militia group here in Idaho called the Real Three Percenters of mm. Idaho. Um, you know, she's had other controversies where she uh, has supported uh, people who have been convicted, and now that conviction was vacated. Uh, the only man to be convicted with the Bundy Ranch standoff uh you know, about a decade ago in Nevada, uh, sending love to him in prison. So, you know, he she has uh, really courted that vote. We'll see if it turns out well for her in the primary. But, uh, you know, that remains to be seen.